Hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. All right, so today is going to be a different but interesting video. Uh, something I haven't done before. A lot of people have uh, seen me post some pictures on Facebook, Instagram, and everyone just wants to know how I did these um, resin flowers that I've been working on and, you know, what I'm doing with them and all that. So I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I wanted to just mention a few things and show you guys um, some dried results. So I totally forgot in my last video to show you guys um, the dried result of my uh, this painting, which was video 517, I think. Um, but yeah, so it dried really well, no cracks. You can see there's some really pretty shimmer in there. Some of the cells did get kind of stretched out and a little bit distorted, but you know what? It, I'm fine with it. I do love the piece. Um, you can see, so there's some cells here. Um, some of them just kind of got a little stretched out over here. Um, but I do really, really like the piece. As you can tell, like I mentioned in the video, um, the base does dry a lot darker. So when this gets a coat of crystal resin, I'm this is going to be really, really nice. So I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out and I really love the colors. So that is on a 12 by 16 inch canvas and it is available if anyone is interested. Uh, let me put it over here. And then um, the piece from last video. So here it is, it's dry. It did expand, but it didn't expand more than what I had shown you guys in the final, you know, close up of the video. So it did dry pretty good, no cracks, nothing like that. Um, there is shimmer, although you can't really see it right now with these lights. Um, once I do put a top coat of crystal resin, it'll obviously make the colors pop, but I'm really liking it. The one I did on black seemed to work a little bit better, actually a lot better. Um, and the shimmer does show up better on a black base or a darker base. So I'm going to try again and I'm going to do another black base. Um, but yeah, I find that the colors shimmer more on black. So, but I do like it. And I actually, I, I wasn't sure about the colors at first, but I'm actually really, like you can see here, the sapphire is in there and stuff like that. So not too bad, not too bad. So still obviously lots of practice. Um, but I really do think the white base plays a role into why, um, it doesn't look as shimmery right now, not to mention my lights are not really the greatest for that. But yeah, so I'm going to give this uh, coat of crystal resin. And when I do, I will show you guys um, the result. And uh, it is available for purchase. Now, this is a tester piece. So you guys know uh, anything I do that's a tester piece um, is priced lower than what I would normally price it. So if you are interested, email me and let me know. Um, really quickly, calendars. I still have a few left. I'd like to get rid of them because what really am I going to do with a handful of calendars in 2023? Um, so I'd like to see them go. And uh, if you are interested, I am now going to do a Christmas sale and I'm going to do 40% off. How's that? So 40% off. All right. They are regular $50 Canadian. So 40% plus shipping, all right? So if you are interested in a calendar, I've got maybe five or six or so left. So if you're interested, email me. All right, let me put this down. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of things. So my table is full of stuff. So I'm going to set myself up, bring the camera down and let's have some fun. Be right back. All right, everybody, so lots to show you, and I'm going to do my best to explain everything that I can. Um, this might be a short video or like normal video, or this could be a really long video. I have no idea. So just bear with me, okay? Um, first off, I'm going to start off by telling you guys about these boards. Now, if you want to know how I made them and all the information about them, you can check out video number 505, okay? I will link it up here at the top. It is a full, and I mean full, detailed tutorial on how I made this board in particular. Now, the boards, okay, are sculpted panels, okay? 
Um, it's from Bear Woods Supply Company. You guys have seen me talk about these guys lots of times and I've worked on their boards many, many times. Okay, so um, bearwoods.com, okay, and they have, they ship to the US and Canada, all right, and if you buy the sculpted panels, you can save 5% off your order using code Canela. okay? They come in square shape, they come in a circle shape, they come in many, many different patterns. Um, this one here is called Metal. So I'm, I'm really loving that pattern. So that's called metal. Um, this one is called hive. So this is hive, I guess kind of like a beehive. Um, and then I have a square one here. This one is called frequency. So I think this one is the same as this one. So that is frequency. Um, like I said, there's a bunch of different designs different sizes, okay? And as I mentioned, bearwoods.com, all that information will be in the description below, okay? And the discount. So what you also need when making these really quickly are the easy forms, okay? These are, they come in a little bag like this. You need these to put them around the edge when you're putting your resin on, otherwise the resin will fall off because it's not level, not level, it's not all the same. You see the difference? Okay, but like I said, go to video 505, because I'm not really going to explain in great detail how to do these panels, okay? Um, because I have a full video tutorial already on it. So check out video 505 if you want to learn how to do these sculpted panels. Um, so I did that one, this one here in that video, and then this one here is a new one I just did. Yes, I have it on my little turntable so that I can turn it around and show you guys. But I ended up doing um, four colors of purple. I took my Loli Veffy, Loli Veffy metallic marker, okay, and I added a silver border between all four colors. And then I added all my resin, okay? These aren't stuck, the roses aren't, nothing's been glued on yet, okay? This is all just testing right now. So I've done that. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to go step by step here for you guys, okay? So I've there's about three to four layers of resin on these, okay? And they're all step by step. For the resin, for this one, when I did the video, I used the regular tabletop crystal resin, okay? Just the regular resin I used for this one here, all right? For this one here, I actually used, oh, these are heavy, Good, goodness. I used shallow casting resin. Now, I could have used regular resin. I don't know why I use shallow casting. You can use both, it doesn't matter. The difference between the two is you can pour a much thicker base, a thicker um, layer with the shallow casting resin. With the regular casting resin, it can only be a thin layer because it's not meant for deep pours. So I used shallow casting resin on this one and I also used it because it's virtually bubbleless and there's no air bubbles. Very, very, very minimal air bubbles. So that's why I actually use shallow casting, but you can still use the tabletop resin to do these boards. Um, you just have to do less thickness um, and do multiple layers, okay? So that is the difference. So either one is fine. And if you buy them on the Crystal Resin website, um, you can obviously save 7% off using code CANELA7, all right? Anything you buy from Loli Veffy, such as the markers, you can get 10% off using Canela 10. All right, so anything that I buy that I can get you guys a discount on, I'm going to mention it. All right, some people are like, oh, you sound like an infomercial. No, I actually want my viewers to save money. Okay, so that is really important for me. If I can save money buying this stuff, then you should be able to save money buying this stuff. So discount for Crystal Resin, discount for Loli Veffy, discount for the wood boards, okay? 
Now, everyone, and actually, as you can see, this one kind of has a little bit of glitter in it. Do you see the glitter? Isn't it pretty? So for the glitter, I just used glitter from Glitter Babes, okay? Glitterbabes.ca. Um, I've got all kinds of glitter for them. And yes, you can save off your glitter from this website as well. 15% uh, off. Again, info will be in the description below. Okay, so you can save on glitter as well. Okay, the flowers. Everybody loves the flowers. Okay, now before I even get any further with this, the inspiration for the flowers, for the idea of the flowers, came from a, um, an amazing artist that I follow on Instagram. Her name is Sarah Bernstein, and I will link her Instagram in the description below. So if you do have Instagram, click the link, go and follow. She is an amazing artist and I saw her idea um, and I was like, I've got to try this. It is so beautiful. So um, that is where my inspiration comes from, from these uh, flowers here from Sarah. All right. Um, okay. A lot of people have been wondering, how do I make them? So I make them using resin and of course I use the shallow casting. I do not use tabletop resin um, because if you get any air pockets or air bubbles in the mold, um, then it's gonna show when you um, take it out of the mold the next day. So I would 100% recommend shallow casting resin. Not deep, don't, don't mix up the two, there's two. There's a shallow casting resin and a deep casting resin on the Crystal Resin website. You do not need the deep. The deep is if you're pouring like four to five inches, um, you're only pouring very minimal. And so use the shallow casting resin, okay? Please, please keep that in mind. So the molds I have are from Amazon, okay? So they are called Redesign Decor Molds, okay? This is what it looks like. I will have these listed in my Amazon shop, okay? I will put the links, the links are always in the description below, and I will do my best to remember to put the links in the comments, and I will pin it to the top. So if you go to the comment section, you will see the links for US uh, and Canada, and I'll see if I can find them on the UK website and add them to my UK shop as well. So they are off Amazon. Um, they're not cheap, at least not in Canada. Um, these molds can range anywhere between $30 to $40. Um, some of them are prime, some of them are not. So some take a little longer than others to arrive. But I have very many different designs. So this is the big rose here, which um, I have here, right? So that is the beautiful... This is so stunning. These are amazing. I think these are actually made for cake, for food. I don't know. But I love them because they're not shiny. They come out with a matte look and not a shiny look. And that's what I really, really like about them. So this is the rose design. Then um, there's this design here, which yields this here, okay, which is super pretty. And then there is this design as well. That is where I get these flowers. So there's that flower, um, this flower here. And then um, I, this one's my one of my most important ones because you get the leaves. Here, let me get a lighter color so you can see it better. You get the leaf and then you get the branches, which are super important if you're doing something like this, right? Because you need the branches. So I actually have two of these molds um, because it's a real pain in the butt to do three branches only and then have to wait like a full, you know, 10 hours or so to take them out and then do another set of branches. So I kind of got tired of waiting and having to wait to get new another set. So I ended up just buying another mold. So I have two of them. Um, so I've got two of those. And then there's this one. There's so many online. It's not even funny. There's 
all kinds of designs and I'd like to get more, but again, they're a little pricey. But, um, and then there's this one, which is really small flowers. And that would be um, these ones here. So for example, you get this teeny tiny rose, which is good for smaller projects. That one was from over there. Um, you get a rose like this. Let's see, like that. I was just playing around with colors, um, but I really loved this one, if I can pick it up. I have a hard time picking things up. This rose is super duper pretty. So that one is from over here. So these are smaller molds and they have little leaves or leaves, you wanna call it. Um, I did a purple one here. Uh, I was just practicing with my TLP piggies to figure out what colors I liked, but yeah, so this one's a lot smaller. So if you're doing a smaller project on a smaller piece, this one would be really good. Now, the wet on Amazon, so I showed you guys this one. Amazon has their own version, which is this one. They are identical, okay? This one is a lot cheaper. I think this one was 18 bucks, and this is like 30 or 35, okay? But I will tell you this, the quality between the two, this one is far more superior. Um, I've actually made quite, actually I made almost all of these with this here, but I will tell you this, the difference in color, so if I were to use cinnamon from TLP and I did the stem in cinnamon on this and I did the stem in cinnamon on this, they actually are different colors. So it has to do with the fact of the kind of mold, the material, and maybe the color, I'm not sure, but the colors I do in this end up being different if I use the exact same colors and do it in this. So keep in mind, because what I was trying to do was, I was trying to do a piece where I did this, and then I added a few other pieces, but I had to use like, let's say this mold, for example, and the colors didn't match. So the stems, if I used, like I said, cinnamon for the stem on here and cinnamon for the stem on here, they ended up being different color when I took them out. So now it wouldn't match. Now they don't match if I was trying to pair them up on the same piece. So that is why I ended up buying this one so that if I were to do a piece and needed to use all of this with a few branches from here, they at least match. So keep that in mind that if you do buy the cheaper version, um, it will be different colors, okay? It will come out completely different. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to put those, as I mentioned, on um, my Amazon shop links. Let me think what else. Okay, the flowers, I'm, okay, I'm having, this one was easy for me to do, but I am struggling, y'all, to figure out what colors to put on this one here. I've started off with a dark rose, and so the color possibilities are ridiculously endless. I can do all one shade. I could, let's say, maybe I don't want that dark color there, and I want to add yellow. Um, I could put yellow there. Um, or I could do white down here. You know what I mean? Like there's like, look at this beautiful blue flower. Look how pretty that is. So there's so many different color combinations you can do or just pick and do all one color like I did here with the rose. With the roses, I did all one color. But there's so many fun things to play with. So I can even change it and do that color. Um, you know, maybe take this off and maybe use um, this one instead, kind of like this. But again, my stems don't match. So you have to, you have to really remember what colors you're using when you're doing these and dusting the molds because you're going to end up with different colors. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see how they're different color? <laughs> so you have to write these things down. Believe me when I tell you, every time I did a flower, I would take a picture of it on my phone and then I would put in uh, on the picture what color I used, what TLP color I used. Now, when you are doing these flowers, 
Okay, I use my paint brushes here. Um, two of these are from Arteza and one is I think just from the dollar store. Okay, you need different sizes for whatever, you know, shape you're doing. And um, if you, once you dust them, let's say I dust, I'll show you an example. I dusted these with a color. Now you have to fill it with resin. You can either fill it with black resin or with white resin. Or if you really want to be bold, fill it with uh, resin and color the resin with that same pigment. But to be quite honest with you, that is way too time consuming for me. Um, so if I were to do a red flower, you could tint the resin red as well and pour it in here. But you don't know how much resin you need, then you're wasting resin, then you don't have enough resin. I just like to do either white or black, but I'm going to show you the difference between white and black because it is ridiculously different. So I will show you these two pieces and I'll show you the example, okay? So this, both of these are Pinwheel by TLP, okay? Both of them are Pinwheel and you can see they are completely different in color you wouldn't even know that they are the same pigment that I used. The difference being this one, I put white resin behind it and this one, I put black resin when I filled up the mold. So like it is really, really, really different between white resin and black resin. And it depends on the color too, like on the pigment that you're using. So um, for example, I'll show you here, actually, I did some branches. So these branches are done using, again, the same color. Um, I do have a white background to show you. Let me see. Maybe you can see it better like this. There we go. Maybe that's better. I don't even know without dropping them there. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's so hard to see, but they are the same pigment, but this one is so much lighter than this one. And of course, this one, I used white resin, and then this one, I used black resin. So if you want like a light pastel-y type flower, I would add white resin to the back of it. If you want something dark, like look how beautiful this is. This is such a beautiful flower. And this color, I can't remember which one I used, but again, I have it all written down and I've taken pictures and documented all of the colors because you have no idea. This color shocked me. Actually, it was, I think it was a white type of color, a, one of the white pigments from TLP, and it ended up being this, again, because I used a black base, right? So lots and lots of different colors. Okay, now with white though, okay, with a white base, if you do not dust your mold really, really, really well, there's a chance where it will show the white, okay? So that is one thing you really have to be careful about when you are using white. You must dust the mold perfectly, even along the edges of the mold, because if you don't, this is what will happen, okay? Another thing I learned while doing this, um, for example, this mold here. I did white in this one and like uh, red in this one and another color in this one. So what I did was I dusted, actually this one was red because I can still see some red particles in here. So I dusted this red, then I did this one blue. But what happened was when I was dusting this one, um, because the particles are so fine, they kind of fly in the air and it must have gotten onto this one. Um, beef, and I, I didn't notice because when I did the white, look it, you see what happened? There is some red dust particles that got onto my white flower and then I dusted all the white and didn't notice. And now there's red on there. So you can't take that off. That doesn't come off. Um, so to me, this is a fail. I'll, I'll still use it maybe, but I don't like the fact that there's a little bit of red there. So if you are planning on doing different colors, 
Start with your light colors first. So I should have done this in white first and then done these two. So keep that in mind um, if you plan on using white. Um, but yeah, it's not going to work. Right? So keep that in mind. Let me think. I will show you guys how to dust the molds and how to fill it with resin once I get my table cleaned up. I wanted to show you guys some other ideas. If you don't want to buy these sculpted panels, um, because I'm not going to lie, this is a lot of work. Um, the results are gorgeous, though. Um, the results are amazing, but there's a lot of work to it, okay? And if you don't want to use these, that's fine. You can use these flowers to do other stuff. For example, let me show you. So this is one of the little small eight inch rounds I had done. Beautiful little bloom, all right? And um, it's really, really pretty. And then I did this flower set and I looked at it and I thought, well, look, hold on a second. These colors match really well with this. So you could literally do this. Let me find the right spot or at least a nice spot. And look, it fits perfectly on here like that. How pretty is that? I am loving this a lot. So I'm literally going to glue this onto my board. And now I have created a really special piece. I think it is absolutely beautiful. So you've got the bloom technique in the background. The colors are super pretty. So I thought this matched really, really well. And it fits so perfectly on this little eight inch round. It's perfect. Let me show you another one. So again, this is one of my rounds that I did. I'll put it here in the light so you can see. All right, I did this round and then I happened to do this flower and look how perfect it matches with this piece. It is like, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to use this piece on this round. And now I have this new piece here that looks so pretty. I think it's amazing. I will show you two more and then we'll get down to business. So here's another piece. All right. And then I have this with multicolor flowers, two colors. And again, you put it here and the colors match so nicely. Now you can decide, do you want it like this? Do you want it like that? You know what I mean? Like I have to play with it some more. I kind of like the way that shows in there like that, but these colors match super well. And then the last one I'm going to show you, this is a swipe I had done that I was playing and practicing. This is on a um, 10 inch board, 10 inch board. And, but look at this, how pretty does this look? Actually, I'm gonna move it this way. How pretty is that? So the possibilities are endless. Like, I mean, you can do this flower or if you don't wanna do that, and I don't know, you wanna add a white rose in the center. I don't know, I kinda don't like that, but you get what I'm saying, right? I actually just really, really like these ones because it's like one full branch and it like really works perfectly on um, these panels here. And I'm really loving these. So actually the four I just showed you, if anyone's interested in purchasing any of those, you can email me. All right, I'm going to clean up my table. I'm gonna set up my, I'm just gonna show you guys how I dust and put resin into one of these molds and um, yeah, actually I wanted to show you one more thing I did. So the sculpted panels also come in um, coaster sets too. So you can buy a set of four coasters. And as you can see, you see the sides, aren't they cool? So I did these the other day and I painted them with Arteza. Same, same thing I did on this from video 505 is the exact same thing I did, but like mini version. All right, um, so yeah, 
but these are super cute and I added a little sparkle to them. There's a set of four, obviously, but I don't have four hands. Um, but yeah, these are also available for purchase if you are interested. All right, let me clean up my table and I'm gonna bring you guys closer and I'm gonna show you guys how to do some work here, okay? All right, everybody, so I'm sitting here on my stool, I'm comfy, and I'm going to show you guys how I dust these molds. Now, before I do that, I wanted to show you guys, this is what I was talking about. So you remember this one I showed you guys? You think I use like some sort of green or olive green? Nope, this is what I used. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker, I know, right? So this was actually White Haven. And so I used this, but I used it on a black resin, with black resin, and that is how it turned out. The center is Violet Rain. Um, again, all TLP. Um, but yeah, isn't that crazy? So when you use a dark resin, the dark black on the back, that is what you get. Let me show you another example. So this one here, you'd think is some sort of like maroon or, you know, maybe if you're familiar with TLP, maybe Sangria or Syrah. Nope, it is actually Ballet Slipper. So that's crazy. When I took this out of the mold, I was shocked and I had to like second guess myself. I'm like, did I really use Ballet Slipper? Yes, I did. Um, because like I said, I document everything because if you don't, you are not going to remember what color this was. Believe me. So yeah, that is the difference because I used black resin. Now, if I used white resin, I believe that is ballet slipper. I'm pretty sure. I have to look at my, my camera, my pictures on my phone. But yeah, it really depends if you use black or white resin. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, before I forget... Um, I'm not going to do it on camera, um, but for these pieces, when you want to glue them on, I did forget to mention, what I will be using is this Star Bond glue. Um, you can use whatever glue you want. I particularly like this brand. It works really, really well. I've used it in previous videos. If you saw video I did long, long, long time ago where I made... Um, bottle openers, resin bottle openers, I used this. So I will be using my Starbond glue to uh, glue these on. So I will literally just put some glue on the back and then place it down and it'll be good to go. I don't want to do it right now. I'm not going to do it on camera because I want to make sure I strategically place these where I want them to be um on these and and do it and not have to worry about oh I better hurry up because I'm on camera and it's taking too long so just um that's what I use and I do have a discount code for this too so that'll be in the description below so that is what I use to glue everything on but like I said you can use crazy glue from the dollar store if you want I don't know like I mean I've never tried it I just find this stuff works really really well okay um, when you are working with piggies, um, please, please, please wear a mask. Um, it is very important. Yes, this is my mask with my R on it when I was selling merch at the time. Um, please wear a mask because when you open these bottles, um, there will be dust particles coming out and it is not healthy for you or your lungs to be inhaling any of these particles. So please keep that in mind. Um, please wear a mask, especially when you're dusting these molds, because believe me, when you're sitting there brushing away, um, it will come flying in your face. If you want to wear glasses too, by all means, um, wear glasses. But I'm telling you, please, please put a mask on. Um, for this video purpose, I'm not going to put a mask on. Because if I do, I pretty much think um, it's going to be muffled and you can't really hear me. So I'm going to take the mask off for just this video um, so that you guys can actually hear me. But please put a mask on. So I, I typically use these three brushes. Um, like I mentioned, this one's from the dollar store. It's thick and fluffy. I use this one um, when doing bigger pieces like um, this one. 
or um, the big rose. It's so much easier to dust when you have a bigger brush. I have this teeny tiny brush. See how small that is? Um, it's uh, round one. Okay, actually, I forgot. Let me show you. This is what it's from. Hold on. I guess I should have brought this. I always forget something. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, this came from this pack. So this is um, a pack of 12 brushes from Arteza. Um, these were in here. And I got this off Amazon. Um, if you're in Canada, um, you can get it off Amazon. If you are in the US or UK, you can buy it off the actual Arteza website. Okay, and if you buy it from the website, you can save 10% off using code Canela10. If you buy it off Amazon, there is no discount code. So if you are in the US or UK, you can buy this set from their website and save 10% off. Sorry, my fellow Canadians, there is no discount per Amazon, unfortunately. Okay, so that is where I get these brushes and there's so many in there, um, but I really like this one. This one is for fine details like this center in here, which would be this center here. Okay, so I use this fine, fine tip brush for the centers, okay? And then I have this one, which is called Six Flat, Six Flat. And I use this one for smaller, like the leaves or the stems, you know, stuff like that, okay? These are pretty much the three I have ever used for the uh, this these projects here. So I am going to dust um, two of these to show you guys, and I'll try and zoom it in so that you guys can see, and I'll tell you guys what colors I'm using. And here's another example. You see how dark this is? So this is Enchantment, okay? So look how different it is. And again, I used black resin. So it's very different when you use black resin compared to white resin. So there's a lot of trial and error with these. If you want something dark, you go black resin. If you want something pastel -y, um, you know, light colored, you go white resin, okay? So keep that in mind. But again, I prefer black. If I had to pick between black and white, I prefer black because again, if you don't dust it properly along the sides, the white will show, right? Um, if you don't dust it properly on the black, it's very forgiving and you can't really see the flaws. So keep that in mind. All right, let me zoom in on you guys. And I'm going to start, I'm going to use um, Harvest Gold for the center. Now you always want to do the little parts first and then the outside. So um, I always store mine upside down so I can see what color and the name they are. But once you flip it back up, give it a tap and tap it so that any of the pigment on top, um, you know, gets off the lid. And when I tell you to carefully open these, I'm not joking, guys. Like, seriously, be very careful with them. Now, I'm not trying to freak you guys out or anything. I just want you guys to be safe, okay? So I'm literally just going to tip my brush and without like dropping any of that pigment. See if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that, right? Okay, and I'm lightly going to just dust the inside of this center here. And a little of this goes a long way, okay? So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna dab a little bit more. So these little piggies can last you a super long time if this is all you're using them for. If you're using them to do bloom technique or Dutch pours like I've been doing lately, um, you know, obviously you use a little more, but again, they're still gonna last you a ridiculously long time. So definitely worth your money. So I'm going to, almost done, make sure you get those sides covered really, really well. Because again, if you don't, it's going to show. All right, so there, that's the center. 
Um, usually I have a piece of paper towel and I don't have any because I ran out. Can you believe this? Oh, here it is. Hold on. Okay, so I usually just have a piece of paper towel and I just like to rub the brush on it and just kind of clean whatever dust. I don't, I do not wet them. Do not put it in water and wet it to clean it because then your brush is going to be wet. <clears throat> when you go to put it in your powder, forget it, you're done. So do not wet them, okay? So that's it for the center. I'm going to close this back up. And I'm going to be using Bellini, and that is actually this color here. So do you see the difference? So that is Bellini um, using white resin. So I'm going to do Bellini because I want this flower to be Bellini. Now, because it's a big piece, I'm going to use my big brush, some powder along the edge here, okay? So I'm going to just dip the tip like so, okay? And try not to, see I just dripped on my hand, try not to put your brush over anything, you know, when you're moving it because it could literally drip and then you're gonna get it in like a different mold and then you're toast. So just don't do that. And then just carefully now we just, and sometimes what I like to do is I like to put my hand over another mold, like one of the other shapes to cover it just in case some, you know, dust goes flying. Can you see the dust flying? All right, so this is why a mask is super duper important, okay? Your health comes first over art. Please keep that in mind. All right, so I dust it, and as you can see, I'm covering this mold because I don't want that to get dusted. If I was doing another color in that, you don't want this Bellini to be in there. So I'm going to make sure, you notice how I'm going sideways here to make sure I get the edges covered like this. Like, I mean, you could tape it off if you really want to, but that's just a lot of work. I seem to be doing fine so far with the way I'm doing this by just using my hand to cover other parts all right and then that's it so this is why this big brush really comes in handy if I had tried to do that with this little guy it's going to take me forever so there you go that one is done and dusted making sure you get all the little crevices okay and that's it it's finished so again now I'm going to take my brush I usually have this on my lap and I'll do it down here. You don't want to do it up here and then flick dust particles into your mold. So I like to do it down here in my lap. Um, I also take my finger. Uh, I'm going to do it down here, but I take my finger and I flick like this. And it gets a lot of the dust out because if you're going to use a different color now, like if I used blue and my brush was all blue and I go to use white, you know what's going to happen, right? Or you can just have multiple brushes, but you don't really need to because I literally use this same brush. So I literally just flick and it gets rid of a lot of the dust. See, it's like clean again. All right, so that's done with that one. So I'm going to put the lid on. I'll do one more and then we'll get to the resin. Okay, Ooh. okay. Um, so I'm going to dust this one. So there's a stem here. I'm going to use s'mores for the stem. And again, because it's so small, I'm going to use, I can actually use this one. So I'm going to carefully open this one like so. And I'm going to just tip the, dip the tip. That actually rhymes, dip the tip. And I'm going to carefully brush in here. So when I dust these molds, I usually do like all three or four at a time. And I'm telling you, it is ridiculously time consuming. So if I do this and like two or three more, 
Because if you're going to do it, you might as well just do a bunch of them at once instead of mixing resin multiple times and like the next day mixing more or whatever, whatnot. I just like to do it once and be done with it. Um, so dusting these molds can take me over an hour, you know, depending on how, you know, intricate the colors are. You can also obviously change the colors, you know, um, like with that big, with this big rose here, you could like do the outside one color, the inside another color, and like different shades, right? There's so many things you can do. All right, so that is done. Making sure the sides are covered. Okay, and I'm gonna, again, wipe it down here in my lap, clean it off, and that's it for that one. And I'm going to now dust the actual flower, and I'm going to use um, Constellation. And that's what that looks like with white resin. And I really like that. So I don't have a flower in this size with Constellation. So I'm going to use that. All right. And I'm going to use my big brush because it's a bigger piece. So again, dip the tip. And I'm going to just brush it on. Again, covering the side one of the other pieces because I don't want to get purple in it like I mean that just it would be silly you could put it actually you could put a piece of paper down I didn't even really think about that or Kleenex or something just cover it if you can okay cover it with something all right cover my branches here but yeah actually I never really thought about that you could use a piece of paper canola all right yeah, you could totally use a piece of paper. Why didn't I not think of that sooner? I know now. So I will use a piece of paper next time just to cover. And that's it. Someone's at my front door. Oh, Amazon delivery. Gosh, I love having a ring camera. You can like see everything. Okay, that's it. So you see here I've got like all purple on my brush. So... I literally will clean it off here on my paper towel first, and then I will flick it like this. Can you, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, but just flick it with your finger, okay? It will really, really, really help with getting any excess powder off of there. Really, super, really will help. Again, and this is why you need a mask, but look, all the purple's gone, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, um, when you're done dusting your molds, I'm gonna, I really wanna do two purple molds, so I'm gonna speed you guys up. I'm gonna do these two molds really quickly, and then I show, I'll show you what I do. All right, so I've dusted the molds. One thing you should let me, I've said this to you guys a hundred times, but having baby wipes in your studio is a must, all right? So you can see here, I actually dropped some powder onto the mold. So baby wipes really help with cleanup, just like so. And like that, clean it up. All right, so that's done now. Oh, I didn't put the lid back on this. We shall do that. So I've got those done. Okay, I'm going to put white in these ones and black in these ones. Now, I've just finished dusting them and there's loose particles, loose pigment in here. So what I like to do is I like to blow the pigment out, not in your face, obviously. So I put it here to the side and I blow. Um, if you're doing it like in your kitchen or something, uh, maybe you might want to go outside and give it a quick blow. Um, I'm not going all the way outside. And this is my studio in the basement. So I'm just going to give it a quick blow. Okay. And that'll get rid of any excess particles that are in the mold. Okay. Um, and again, please wear a mask. Obviously not while you're blowing, but um, wear a mask when you're doing that. Okay. Okay. That's that part. This is going to be such a long video. I'm going to mix up some resin, a little bit, just a little bit, and I'm going to tint it with my paste. 
my white and my black paste from Crystal Resin. Um, if you go on the website, you're probably not going to find this right now because I think it's sold out at the moment. Um, but you can use any paste. If you go on to Google and you just search resin paste, black resin paste, um, you know, you can find it on Google, on Amazon. Did I say Google? I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. On Amazon, um, black resin paste or white resin paste. I prefer paste. I don't like powders and you could technically use um, paint, like acrylic paint, like tube paint, um, but I don't recommend it. That's just me. That's just my preference. Um, I'd rather use paste that is specifically designed for resin. Um, so yeah, if you can't find this on the Crystal Resin website, then just Google, uh, again, I said Google, yeah, Amazon. Go on Amazon and look for resin paste, okay? Um, I'm gonna mix some resin, I'll be right back. All right, so I have gone ahead, mixed my resin. It's one to one, okay? One part of the resin to one part hardener. Do not measure it on a scale, you don't weigh it, okay? You've got to do equal parts in a cup, okay? Um, again, I believe video 505 will tell you that. Um, if it doesn't, my resin video uh, 429, I believe it is, where I'm teaching you how to top coat, you know, your pieces will also explain how to mix your resin. All right, so I've gone ahead, mixed my resin. I did two little cups. One's got the black in it. One's got the white in it. And so I'm going to now pour it into my mold. Super duper important here, okay? Do not overflow the mold. Um, once you put it in, it will expand. Do not put too much. What happens, let me see if I have an example. What happens if you overflow the mold is you end up, I don't have an example because I fixed them all, I think. Um, this might be a little bit of an example. I don't know if you can see. This is a, a, a not a very great example, but um, you can see the little ridge there. Now I've done a few where the ridge was a lot and I have to sit there with scissors and cut it or cuticle trimmers. Um, do not overflow it because what happens if you overflow it and then you have to cut it? So this is an example. You see how the sides match, whatever, and then I overflowed it on this side and I had to cut it and now it's white, okay? So do not overflow your molds. It is so easy to overflow them. Um, and put too much, and then you're gonna have a hard time trying to take it out. So you just want to put a little bit and then just wait, let it do its thing, let it expand, let it move. Um, one other good thing to have on hand, which again, I never do, <laughs> let me get it, um, is a skewer or something with a sharp tip. Okay. And then you can use it to, um, you can use this tip to kind of push the resin into small crevices. For example, this stem like that. And look, it's full, okay? The, it, the piece is full. You don't need to add any more because if you overflow it, it really is going to be a problem. I've overflowed a piece where it flows over and it has fallen into the other mold. Um, so that's no good either, okay? So you could literally, if you need a bit more, just add a drop or two off your popsicle stick. Do not pour it with the cup if you just want to add a little bit. Okay. So there we go there. I'm going to use my stick to push it into the little crevice here. Help it here along the end. And that's it. That is full now too. Okay, again, baby wipes are your friend. I'm gonna put that over here. Now let's do the white. Make sure it's stirred really well. If you have any extra resin, you know, put it in another mold or dust another flower if you need to. Don't waste resin, that's just silly. So I'm gonna put that much for now and let that expand and see if I need to add any more just by using some drops from the popsicle stick. But once you've put it in, it is a pain to try and take some out. You can use a pipette, they call it, 
and you know suck it out um but just don't do it don't add a lot all right i'm using my popsicle stick and literally letting it drip off the stick and i'm going to use my skewer here to push it down into the corner here and like so it's done all right now i'm going to obviously i need a bit more here so I'm gonna use my popsicle stick cause it's easier for me to use that and not accidentally pour too much. I'd rather do it this way. And then that way I'm safe. Okay, I'm gonna push with my popsicle stick. I need one more drop here on the side and I should be good. Like so, that's it. So do not overflow it. Now over here, I need a few drops here in the corner. So I'm going to add a drop here and a drop here. And then I'm going to use my skewer to push it if I need to. All right, so I'm gonna get my skewer and push some of the resin over here into the corner. There we go. Push some more over here into this corner. There we go. And I think I need one more drop right here. That's it. Okay. Now I still have some left. Obviously, you know, you can't measure how much you're going to need. It's really just a little goes a long way with the resin. You don't need much. Um, it's very deceiving. You might think, oh, I need like this much. And you don't. You need like that much. You can always make more if you need to, but if you have all this extra and you have nowhere to put it or, you know, another mold to put it into, then you've just wasted resin. So keep that in mind. Um, I do have some extra, so I am going to dust a few more molds off camera and I'll, I'll use up that resin. So that is how I do this portion here. I'm going to now let this sit. It should be ready to come out in about, I don't know, eight to 10 hours. So I will unmold it with you guys on camera and um, we'll finish off the video at that point. So I will be back in like eight to 10 hours. Be right back. All right, everybody, it is the next day and these are raw cards. So let's take them out and see what we've got. So I'll start here with the, look how pretty they are. So that is the, I think it was Constellation, yep. My constellation petals, so those are perfect. And then I did end up dusting um, and made some more branches. You can never have enough branches, for sure. You never know when you're gonna need a little branch. So those turned out really well. Okay, let's check out this flower here. This was the Bellini. Oh, it's so pretty, look at that. I love it. And I did not overflow the mold. Yay. <laughs> I've done that a few times. So that is Bellini. And let's see what we got here. Oh, so you can see here, I missed a spot, right? So this is what happens with white. If you miss a spot, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's all right. But you definitely have to be super, super careful and make sure you cover the entire mold. Um, but yeah, that's what with white. If it was black, you wouldn't really see it. All right, let's see what we've got here. Uh, what did I use here? Venus. Ooh, that one's pretty. So that's Venus. And I don't know what this one was. Oh, this one was Enchantment. Enchantment. Look at that. I love these. I could just make these all day long and just, I don't even know what I would do with them. <laughs> so, oh, and here's, I did some enchantment. Um, extra. See, this is why I have two of these because you, you need lots of petals and um, lots of branches. All right, so you can see here now my molds um, around the edge has powder on it. So I literally just take um, a baby wipe and I wipe around the edge and voila, look, all clean. So this is why I tell you guys having baby wipes 
in your studio is a must. And that's it. The mold is clean. Just let that dry off. Um, so yeah, there you have it, everybody. Did you notice I changed my nails? <laughs> I went and got my, my nails done yesterday. It was due time for a fill. I went Christmassy, Christmas red. Anywho, um, yeah, so there you go. And it's a so easy cleanup. Um, I don't put them in the water and clean them unless they're really bad, although I've never tried it. Um, they come out really clean in here. So I just, like I said, take the um, baby wipe and wipe them down and they're ready to go for the next project. So that's it, finished. Um, there you go. I hope um, you guys enjoyed that. I know there wasn't much to it uh, in terms of teaching you guys, but I hope the information I shared in today's video was extremely helpful. Don't forget, everything is in the description below. Um, I do get some people asking, well, how, how do I get to the description? Where's the description? Um, if you are watching on a tablet or your phone, um, you basically just click on the title of the video um, and it'll expand. And then that's where you'll see all the information um, and links and everything is in there. If you're watching from like a smart TV, I don't know how to help you there. I've never really watched any videos from a smart TV, so I don't know how to get to the description. Um, or if you're watching from a computer or a laptop, again, just click on the description, like on the title of the video and it will expand and you'll be able to see um, all the information below. So everything is down there and I, all the discounts, like I said, discounts for the wood rounds, for Loli Vefi, for the glue um, that you need to glue on your pieces, um, crystal resin discount, glitter discount, um, everything discount down below. To buy the, this little piggy pigments, the website is listed below. It's Fluid Art Co. You can get that and they ship. There's all kinds of country. You have to choose the country you live in. There's Canada, US, Australia, UK, and Europe and you pick which country you live in or wherever you live and you can order these um and i love them i will never use anything else other than these these are amazing and that's it and then these i will put in my amazon shop so please click on my amazon link to get to amazon and shop for these if you want or just shop for anything on amazon um you don't have to buy art supplies um, you could just click on my link and just shop on Amazon like you normally would. It doesn't do anything, doesn't change anything for you, doesn't change the price. Everything is just the same. But when you click on my link, it supports me and my channel by clicking on the link and just shopping like you normally would. So that is it. I hope you guys found this information helpful. Um, you know, if you create pieces of your own, feel free to post on Facebook and tag me so I can see your creations or on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I have fun with it because <laughs> the possibilities, uh, are endless and I'm, I'm really, really loving this, like doing these blooms and then putting the flowers on them. So like I said, if anyone is interested in those, um, email me. So that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and I shall do my best to answer all your questions. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.